Welcome to Watch Some Posey, I'm Austin. All right, so headed to Fukuoka to check out watches. I'm gonna take the bus. My in-laws, that's weird. I'll just call them Bob and Gigi. Bob and Gigi live in an area called Itoshima, so it's about a 40 minute bus ride. Really easy bus ride. Uh, it never feels like 40 minutes. It's always like once we get on the, the highway, that's where it feels like 10 minutes. Uh, a lot of good scenery, a lot of good views. Uh, so let's see what kind of watches Fukuoka has to offer. All right, so the bus is supposed to come at 57 past the hour, so it's a little bit late. My watch is running about five to six seconds fast a day. I set it day before yesterday, and it's about uh, 11 or 12 seconds fast. So not the not used to this this uh, lack of accuracy coming off the Hydronaut, ironically enough. All right, so, all right, so here we are in Fukuoka. First stop, this building here, Parco. There's a watch shop called Quark in there, so we're, we're gonna check that out. All right, now Quark, if I remember correctly last time, had no filming signs, so might not be able to get any footage there, but we'll see, if I can sneak it, I will. couple of Datejust turnographs, some Milgausses. Be sure to pause the video to see the details on the tags. You'll see a couple prices. That has to do with the warranty, three, five, or 12 year warranty. Couple of Explorer twos, 40 millimeters on the left, 42 on the right. Some Explorer ones. All of these have boxes. You can see if they have papers, uh, papers in the back right there. 42 millimeter Explorer twos. And the Deep Sea, those are James Cameron's uh, on the left, the black dial, and then right there, the graduated dial. A couple of Yacht Masters and black bezel GMTs, some Pepsis. They've really shot up in price since uh, a year ago. And the Big Daddy right there. And it's got a Big Daddy price tag, as you can see. Uh, a couple of MG GMTs and some Yacht Masters. And I don't know why I'm focusing so much on this. Uh, you're gonna you're gonna see quite a few of these. A Kermit, and right next to it a Hulk. Some one four zero six zero M's papers card. Some date subs, those are pre-ceramic. And some uh, ceramic, no dates. More hulks, they had quite a few hulks there. The ceramic Daytonas and some pre-ceramic Daytonas. A lot of blacks and uh, white dialed on the right. and some steel ones. They've really shot up in price. All right, and that's a vintage sub. And not for sale, a couple of really cool pieces. They're probably some of the most collectible pieces of the lot, but again, they're not for sale. Red sub right there. And some vintage GMTs and subs. And on, that, on the right, that's a Sea Dweller. Look at that plastic crystal. And look at the, the tritium patinating on that sub. It's an old GMT, and that's a beauty right there with the bracelet intact, 1675. And some modest 
Perpetuals, a couple steel date jests, a yellow gold president on an aftermarket strap. You got to wonder where the original bracelet went. Same goes for this sub. Look at that plastic crystal. Some links for sale, some tools, a couple of straps, and a Submariner anchor. All right, right on. You can film in court now. All right, so you guys saw that Pepsi ceramic brand new $20,000 plus dollar price tag. All right, well, I asked the guy working there where he got it, and apparently they buy it from overseas dealers. So somebody overseas will buy it and sell it to them. Now, I asked him if I were to buy one of those watches at an AD and sell it there, what I could get for it. Now, they sell here for about 10 grand, but Quark will pay $16,000 for it. So you can, bam, make 6,000 USD if you get lucky enough to find um, a ceramic Pepsi. Now, I have real mixed feelings about flipping and about the 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 gray market element and um, we'll leave that for another video but you know with with uh, that kind of money to be made you're almost crazy not to flip if you run across one of those at an AD um, he said that I, I talked about uh, or I asked him about you know how do you how do you find one of those at an AD? Because I stop by at an, at an AD all the time, which is not quite true, but that's what I told him. And uh, and I've never seen one. And he said basically it's for big spenders, and they they keep them in the back. And if a big spender comes through, uh, according to this guy working at Quirk, uh, they might take it out for them, but they're not likely to take it out for you know some random punter like myself. So, interesting conversation we had. Great pieces there. Wow. Some awesome pieces, not even for sale. All right, next stop. This place. A Yacht Master, and this is an A serial GMT. This is a straight up GMT, not a GMT Master 2, which I think I call it later on in the video. Beautiful piece, love the faded red. A Y serial Explorer 2 with an extra dial, an authentic dial, according to the saleswoman. She said it originally came with the black dial. This is a pre-ceramic date sub. Box papers, everything here comes with box papers and everything, all the goodies included. This is a ceramic sub, another ceramic sub. A uh, two-tone ceramic and a steel Daytona, and I remember when you could get those for fourteen thousand USD. Wow, that GMT was beautiful, faded red. I mean, it had a high price tag. Uh, that was an A serial, which is what I have. I love those faded bezels. I, I'm, 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 it's a bit too expensive, I think, a little bit overpriced, but uh, wow, what a piece. Um, I think the deal there was the Explorer 2. Now that is exactly the same kind of Explorer 2 that I'm wearing. It was a Y serial. Came with an extra dial, which was, according to her, original. Um, also, according to her, for a couple hundred dollars, Rolex will put the new dial in, which I'm not sure if that's correct. I don't know that they would do that. I think they would look and, if it originally came with that white dial, they would put it back in. Uh, but I don't think they would, would even if it's original, uh, original dial, I don't think that they would switch it out. I could be wrong there. Um, pretty much all the pieces had been polished. That Explorer 2 was serviced by Rolex in 2015, and then when they got it, they, they polished. So it's probably had two polishes. According to her, they polish pretty much every piece they get if it needs it. So that's unfortunate uh, you know I like I said to her I would rather have a a piece with a little bit of wear a little beat up and no polish than an aftermarket polish but that's what they do and all the pieces look great there everything had box and papers 
So you really can't go wrong. I mean, it's a bit overpriced, but at the end of the day, you're getting box papers, quality watch, as long as you can get over that polishing bit. to an AD, Iwataya and Tenjin. Random Blanc Ponds. They're pretty ungainly, I'm not a fan. Big thick bezels, kind of look like inner tubes to me. All right, Date Just R Us indeed, specifically two-tone Date Just. They had some steel as well. Pretty much the only professional model there was a $20,000 Yacht Master II. They did have the 369 Blue 116000, and they also had the discontinued 369 silver version, which is also beautiful. Price tag 550,800 yen, exactly what it was when I tried to order it. Beautiful watch, but yeah, I think I kind of dodged a bullet by not getting it. I, mean, I love that watch, but. You can get them for a thousand dollars cheaper, but um, but again, those are new unpolished pieces in there. I don't know. It's it's uh, that's a tough call right there. All right? Does it look like a visit to Alex is very promising? They're real uh, picky about filming in there, so uh, that's not too bad anyway. But I'd still like to check out what they have. They're kind of overpriced as well. All right, I've been trying to get footage of this watch for years. This is the best thing in the shop, an Explore, vintage Explore. And it's not for sale. You can see the second hand, uh, the tritium is completely gone. I think this is an Omega 300, Seamaster 300, and an overpriced two-tone Oyster Quartz. Uh, some random vintage Rolex. Now, this is a little too vintage for me. I wouldn't go this route. And these watches have been in the shop for years. I don't think they really sell watches as much as service watches. And I don't see price tags, so I don't think these are for sale either, but some, some pretty cool vintage Seiko chronographs and some other knickknacks. All right, so Alex is open, but they're cleaning. So they have that thing half down, uh, but you can still go in, which is kind of weird. Um, and I was left unattended with the watches, which is even weirder. Uh, but because of that, I could take some footage. And here it is. All right, we'll check out this place next. A very expensive, overpriced Coke. Now, later on in the video, I think I refer to this as having a hollow end link bracelet, but it doesn't. It's got holes, um, a solid end link, and Luminova. And some vintage pieces. You have a pre ceramic sub with the date and a 36 millimeter Explorer 2. This is probably the best thing in the shop an old Milgaus. Look at that price tag. And yes, that pink dial is aftermarket, pretty hideous. Upper left hand corner, that's uh, 6694, kind of a cool piece, cool 34 millimeter oyster date all gold oyster quartz and one more shot of the milgauss which in terms of milgausses is historically significant on the right an explorer two a couple 40 millimeter explorers a hulk right there in the center various subs mixed in there i think that's a pre-ceramic right there some yacht masters and that's a really expensive black gmt right there look at the price tag some steel daytonas that's a sea dweller on the right and 
a shot of the bunch. That was a beautiful GMT Master II Coke. Didn't come with box or papers, and that price was way too expensive. When I was leaving the shop, well, actually, before I left the shop, I was looking upstairs at the vintage pieces, and they were following me around with that thing on the tray, that uh, GMT Master II. Then I walked downstairs, and, and another guy must have inquired about a couple Rolexes, because they they had him out and on the tray and were following him around too. And the guy, that guy said, put these things away. So put them back in the thing. Um, that's what you call the hard sell. But as I was leaving the shop, they asked me what I was looking for. And I just said, well, possibly uh, a GMT Coke. And he said, what are you looking to pay for it? And I said, well, you know, you can get them for under, uh, a million yen on uh, Rakuten and you know again that one was a million two hundred eighty thousand yen and he said he kind of gave me a wink and said uh, I think we could do a million one hundred thousand for that one so I think they would come down they'd have to come down uh, they should come down it was way overpriced all right, hitting another AD, see what they have. Um, I forgot to tell you that the guy at the AD that I visited before in Iwataya, he had never seen a GMT Master II go through the store, so they had yet to get one, he said. Steel date justs, and up at the top, the only two professional models, the Air King and the Yacht Master 2. All right, so as you can see, slim on steel sports watches, the ubiquitous Yacht Master 2, and the Air King, which you see around. That's uh, not a popular model, although it's a great watch. According to the woman behind the counter, uh, just like at the other AD, when they, when they get them, they just put them out. Now, I don't know how much I believe that, According to her, they get about one GMT Master II every two months. And quick as a wink, it gets bought. Um, surprise, surprise. Um, she says that people come in and ask about it all the time. That is the hot model to have, for sure. All right, we'll go to one more AD, this time Mitsukoshi, which is right across the street from where I just went, which was Daimaru. All right, if you look to the left, you can see a 116000. I think I know a guy that was thinking about getting one of those. Up at the top, the different colors, and the one single professional model, a Yacht Master II. The Yacht Master 2 is like the awkward girl at the party. Beautiful, yet no one wants to talk to her. She is too expensive. Yeah, they're laughing at me. Um, she's too expensive. Functionally speaking, she can't hold a conversation. Nobody wants to talk to her. She's useless, as is the function on the Yacht Master 2. No, it's not useless, but, uh, you know, a 10-minute timer. Twenty thousand dollars just doesn't make a lot of sense. Still a cool watch, but uh, yeah, that's the uh, that's the well. What do you call it? You call it a dog? I wouldn't call it a dog. It's out of people's price ranges, and functionally speaking, like I mentioned, it's just sort of not really uh, useful. So I got that ashtray on fire. The Across Building, which is kind of famous. All right, to the left of me is an area called Tenjin. That's where all of that video was taken. And I'm going to the right, which is an area called Nakasu, which is like the entertainment district. It's full of um, hostess bars and 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 other uh, sort of mm, kind of like sleazy side type places. But there is at least one. Um, 
pawn shop that I thought I'd stop by on my way to Hakata, which is where I'm walking. All right, so come dark, this place where you're looking at now is lit up. And that's where you go to drink and talk to hostesses and whatnot. There's sort of two drinking experiences to ha be had in Japan now. There, there are millions, but you guys know I love my, uh, my, my divisions of two. There's this and there's that. Um, well, one is just going out and drinking like a regular person at a bar and talking with regular people and meeting people, meeting regular people, just being a normal person. Um, and then there's the, the pay uh, for play, well, the, the, the pay scene. And that means, you know, you go out and you drink and uh, a woman or two is sitting with you, perhaps drinking, perhaps not, plying you with alcohol, laughing at your jokes, being cute. Um, did I mention laughing? They'll laugh at anything you say. You'll feel like the funniest guy in the room. Clever as a whip. Um, and that's what your money gets you. And it's kind of fun. And, uh, you know, if, if you're coming from, uh, well, a culture like mine, it, you kind of think, well, that's sort of a loser thing to do. Pay somebody to, to drink with you. And I hear you. But they're kind of a blast. They're kind of fun. Um, I don't do much anymore just because hangovers are a bear and I could do without those. And if you're not drinking, it's really not that fun. But here we are. This is Nakasu. And again, this place behind me uh, just lights up at night. And you can go. There's some advertisements behind me. Some cute legs. And uh, you can sit next to a pair of legs like that. And you can have that pair of legs serve you a drink. And uh, cozy up to you and just make you feel like king of the world. But we'll pass on that today. All right, well, the place to sell your stuff seems, seems to be open, but uh, the place to buy stuff is not open yet. And I don't know why. I guess uh, that place opens around four or five when, you know, the nightlife starts happening. So you can stop by and, and buy a discount gift for the cute girl in your life. But anyway, the best we can do as far as this place goes is just a poster of Rolex, which, hey, even a picture is, is nice. So, I like that. I like that one too. I'm wearing this one. Hey guys, this is Don Quixote, which sells everything and they've got watches as well. So. Okay, Don Quixote is like a novelty shop, so it's weird to see all these Rolexes among you know, pom-poms and squirting flowers and silly hats, a couple of uh, Yacht Master 2s. Now, these these overlays that they put around the watches look so tacky. You can see on the left one has fallen down, but that's one way to tacky up a watch, make it all look busy and, I don't know, it's just a, it's, it's a tacky shop. All right, that's a ceramic Daytona, two-tone. And here's another ceramic Daytona. No, I botched the video of me pushing the pushers, but it's a beautiful watch. Nakasu River. Nakasu Shoten guy. We're going to go somewhere in there in a minute. And this uh, will take you out towards uh, the Sea of Japan. All right, so this is Nakasu Shoten Gai, and right up here is a used watch shop, and it's pretty much the last one that I know in Fukuoka. I'm sure I missed some. There's also a place up here that sells what I think is the best Korean kimchi in Japan, so I might have to buy it. The woman makes it herself, and it's amazing, amazing. Yeah, that's the end of the season. Yeah, I'll cut it, I'll cut it.
This is where you get the kimchi. And you can also pick up a couple of CDs of your favorite Korean pop group too. So, the best kimchi in Japan is running kimchi, does not She's the one that does it. All right, uh, GMT, black bezel. And this has box papers. I think this is a 36 millimeter, no, it's a 40 millimeter Explorer. And 36 millimeter date just, not a fan of that dial. All right, you can see some of the details on it. It's a solid end link and holes case got some scratching around the bezel there luminova dial now that was a beautiful gmt black 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 as uh archie would say um what was it a million ninety-eight thousand yen which is really expensive but compared to the prices i've seen seems sort of competitive. Box papers, so Y serial, which is exactly what I'm wearing right now, which means it's got a solid in links and a holes case and uh, the Luminova. So that's, that's the sweet spot right there. The bezel was a bit scratched as you can see, uh, but pretty nice. Uh, it had been polished by them, which is, again, not ideal. But that's just what you get on the secondhand market in Japan. It's either a Schmicko piece uh, that was sold to them as, uh, as is and, and in Schmicko condition and they didn't need to polish it. But if there's anywhere, they're gonna polish it and they're gonna make it look nice, but again, it's gonna be that aftermarket polish, that third-party polish, which we don't like. But that was, a, that was a nice one. That was a hell of a lot better than that, um, that Coke I had on earlier that uh, oh, didn't, well, that was really pretty schmicko too, but it didn't come with box or papers. And I wanna say it might've been hollow in links, I can't remember, but uh, but a Coke is just a degree better than a black, 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 black. But still, they're both, they're both awesome. All right. I think we got one more place to hit, and that's Hakata Station. There's an AD there, so let's check it out. Taxis lined up at Hakata Station. Okay, so this is Hakata Station, and we're going to hit our last AD, AD number four. I think I've hit all the ADs here in Fukuoka. This one is at Hankyu. What do you bet they've got a Yacht Master 2 for sale? All right, some random Zeniths. A lot of open hearts right there. And you can see the price tags. This is exactly what Archie has. More of a modern styling there and more traditional. And right here, these are the tricolor dial chronographs and uh, onto Rolex. And the one professional model they have, the Yacht Master 2, of course. But they do have some sky dwellers right there. So there you have it. So what did we see, like seven Yacht Master 2s today? That's kind of surprising. Um, well, if you want a Yacht Master 2, I know where you can get one. Just bring your money. Um, all right, so let me know in the comments, what do you think was the pick of the bunch? And what do you think was the dog of the bunch, the worst deal? Be curious to know what you think. I've got my opinions. Perhaps I betrayed them throughout the video. But uh, let me know. Hey, thanks for watching. Take care. See you next time.